And uh, apparently our principal from Highland Elementary wasn't able to make it tonight. And uh, we brought Pro Lodges in, the new owner of Hilltop Mall, to present them uh, 150 backpacks for the kids at the elementary school. And uh, I see that we have a few representatives from Pro Lodges coming in right now. In the meantime, I wanted to let you know that they're doing a lot of things up there at the uh, mall uh, until they break ground. They want to uh, have a uh, trunk or treat on Halloween evening. Um, so I'll let them explain a little bit more. Uh, Eric, do you want to come up and say a few things? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Arto. I think you can hear me. Uh, thank you for having us. My name is Eric Zell. <clears throat> As you heard, I went to high school with Don. I live in Richmond. I also happen to be a consultant to Prologis who bought the Hilltop Mall. And so uh, this is really exciting. My kids and I grew up at Hilltop Mall. So I'm really excited about the opportunity that this presents to the community and to the city and to the region. Um, uh, Arto reached out to us and we've kept an ongoing conversation with Arto and with your neighborhood council <clears throat> because Prologis, um, you know, bought this mall fairly recently, but they understand this is a long-term relationship with the city and with the community. And even though they're starting a process with the city and, and uh, Samita Dekral, who's here, is actually a Prologis, who's the manager of this project, who also lives in the Bay Area. Not, we haven't gotten her in Richmond yet, but we're working on it. Um, so, you know, they understand this is a long-term process, but once you own this property, you're part of the community. And so Arto came and talked to us and said, look, it would really be helpful with the school up here if they could get backpacks to, to assist them. And Prologis really without any hesitation, said, sure, we're happy to do it. How many did you need? Ardo started at 100, next, next call it was 150. So I said, okay, stop there. <laughs> it's, okay, it's gonna keep going. But uh, and then he invited us and Prologis to come here tonight to present it to whoever. I guess at this point, we're gonna be presenting it to Ardo. <laughs> but uh, um, Prologis is really gonna be a great partner in the community because they are very community focused. And they're not just gonna build and leave. They are gonna own this mall uh, for decades and decades to come. So, uh, so Samita would be very happy to talk about where the process is and how they're thinking about it currently. I think it's better to come from her, but I mean, just wanna thank you and we're happy to come back here at the invitation of the community uh, whenever we can. I know, how many months ago? We came up here and presented to all the neighborhood councils. Some of you may have been there. So with that, why don't I bring up Samita the Crawl, who's been great to work with. Samita will say a few words, and Arta, you can come up here and, and get your 150 backpacks. Yeah, there you <laughs> Thank I'll you, everyone. <laughs> well, hi, everyone. Thanks for Hello. being here today. I know you probably have better, more fun things to do. Um, I have two kids who I gave dinner to and got here, and Eric's right, I don't live in Richmond, but I, I really do feel a connection with the community, or at least the beginning of one, because since we acquired the Hilltop Mall, we've had a few community meetings, we've talked a little bit about what we're planning to do there, um, and then, you know, you reached, Arto reached out and talked about these backpacks, and uh, Prologis as a company is just very committed to education, and we thought this would be such a fantastic thing to be able to support uh, kids going to school. I have two kids of my own. I have a 10-year-old and a four-year-old. And uh, you know, I know there's so many challenges in just getting them to school in the morning. <laughs> so having a backpack should definitely not be one of them. So we're really, really pleased. And I hope that you know, the kids are really happy using these backpacks and it can support a really small part of their bright future. Um, and, um, you know, as Eric said, we're super excited about um, being the owners of Hilltop Mall. We're just getting started. We want to work with all of you to, to create everything there that, you know, this community aspires to see there. 
Um, as a small start, we're having, uh, there's going to be a pumpkin patch there this Halloween. And, uh, and then for Christmas, I think there's a Christmas tree uh, area that's going to be laid out. So those are some of the interim uses. And then you'll also be hearing from us in hopefully a month or two with some design workshop type of thing where we can get some input from the community and then put that and work with our architects to come back with some options on what could be laid out there. Um, so that's, that's all I have to say. Um, and once again, you know, for a lot of people, really happy to be here. I didn't get a chance to attend in the last couple of meetings that you had, but well, I'm here today. So what is the actual game plan with the mall? So our plan uh, is, we, our intent is to create a mixed-use development there. And uh, it'll have a few different elements to it. Uh, housing, I know that the community wants to see a grocery store, some logistics. It's going to be a combination of creating jobs creating public spaces so it's an active place where everybody feels like being there again just like they did 20 years ago with the mall. Um, so it's going to have a few different elements and, and that is a lot of pieces of a puzzle. So it takes a lot of work to put that all together and we just selected an architect who's been working on this for a few weeks. We uh, will be connecting with the city of Richmond as well because they're creating a specific plan for that whole area. So that's kind of where we are. In, uh, in the process. I hope that answered your question. No, it yeah, didn't. Yeah. Just keep yeah, you curious. Yes, sir. I had another question. I have thought I saw a sign maybe like a year ago before the pandemic hit saying a Ranch 99 grocery store was going to mm -hmm. open there. Has that plan been uh, put to bed? Uh, where is that in the works? Yeah, that was a plan that the, the previous owner had to bring Ranch 99 here. Uh, we haven't specifically been talking to any one grocery store, so once we have a layout, we'll go out and talk to several of them, and, and that could be one of them. Yes? I rec recall at your meeting about three or four months ago that uh, you said that you were in negotiations and working with the Building Trades Council to make sure that the construction was all uh, done using union labor. Is that still a go? That is still a go. We're still, you know, in conversations with them, and uh, and yes. we'll keep engaging with them as the process goes. But very much all our projects across the Bay Area are union projects, so we are very big supporters of the unions. Good to hear. Yeah. So, are you still looking for ideas for uh, temporary uses until you start breaking ground, like flea markets and? We are, yeah. And actually, it's interesting you mentioned flea markets because we we have been working through Eric trying to see if there is a flea market operator that may be interested in in having a presence at Hilltop, even if it's just seasonal interim. So we'd love to hear any ideas or any relationships that anyone has here who can connect us to some kind of activating use that's community serving. Very good. I may have missed something. Are you going to level? The mall completely? Yes, that's the plan. Completely. Yes. The only thing that stays is Walmart. They have a very long term lease. So I don't know if they stay exactly where they are or we build a new structure for them. That's TBD. But the rest of the mall will go. Any other questions? Okay. So that's the game plan. So you're going to level the mall, you're yes. going to level it out. Yes, level it out and okay. build a new neighborhood there. And start fresh. Yes. Okay. Why are we going to level it out? We have some beautiful uh, areas in the mall. Why are you going to level it out? It's, yeah, that's a good point. And I think what we'll do is, uh, we, we do think there's a lot of history there that people cherish and remember. So I think what we'll do is we'll take certain elements of it and maybe have a memorial and some kind of art feature that has, you know, the art or something, the, the memorable pieces of the mall. But then there are also parts of it that have really deteriorated. You know, we can take you through it now, which do not really that well. So we'll try to do that to preserve the memory of the mall for sure. I'm sure people would like to know what type of time frame you're 
you think you're going to be using to break ground? Well, the time frame is not at all in our hands, as you know, right? There's a process with the city and the council and the community. I would estimate it's going to take between around two to three years. I don't see us breaking ground before that. What other two or three years? Yeah. That's correct. Wow. Yeah. Somebody, somebody actually sound like downtown to do a job, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, let's talk about it. That's, that's what we need. Right? Let, let's talk about it. So I just would love to get do it so and let's get it done, huh? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. We're all for it. <laughs> so, so let me. So the reason it's going to take so long, and you're right, it relates to downtown. But there's been a desire by the city, not by Fulagis, to go through a planning process with the community called a specific plan. And it, it includes the mall plus some of the properties around the mall that they don't own. And so they want to go through a process with the community to come up with a plan that the community can buy into. Now, if they didn't do that, what would happen is Prologis could make an application to the city for a project that also would be the result of meeting with all of you and coming up with a plan. The city got $1.3 million in grant funds to do this specific plan. Wasn't our preference. We would, I mean, left to Prologis, they would probably submit a project, certainly within a year, in terms of working with the community, with a project that the community could, could support. But the city wants to go through this more prolonged process. Um, Long dragged out, huh? What's that? Long dragged out process. Well, we agree. I mean, you know, it wasn't our preference. No, uh, I, yeah, I, I completely understand. Yeah, and you feel free to let them know you'd rather just <laughs> take a different route. Um, but the idea is that it's going to be very transparent. It's going to get you guys input as much as everybody wants to get input. And then at the end of the day, hopefully, when they move forward with the plan into the council, it's something that has at least a majority of the community supporting it. So, yeah, it shouldn't take this long, but it, unfortunately, it's going to, it seems. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Can you say you're going to uh, uh, put a new house in also? You can understand that new housing will go in there. Yes, housing housing will be part of the plan. Part of the plan. Yes. So, so just so you know, the plan, the plan has not been devised at all. But they're looking at what the reason. And I know to answer your question about the existing mall, it's going to be a very different type of project because the old malls with the big parking lots are dying all over the country, and so the the the, the, the parking dependent malls that you're seeing that the hilltop sort of represents are a thing of the past unfortunately and it's a lot of the reason is because we're all buying everything online and so I know we are and so as a result um, there's a lot of focus on how these goods are getting distributed which is what the business that Prologis is in so they want to make sure that this project, by taking down the existing structure, you're going to have, think of it as a blank slate, you're going to have a whole new opportunity to create something much more livable over there where you're going to be able to use the, the property in ways instead of just a big parking lot. And so there's going to be public spaces, there's going to be parks, there's going to be residential, and there's going to be retail, and then there's going to be office uses potentially. We're, we're talking about trying to attract medical uses up here, additional medical uses with the closing of Doctors Medical Center, which I know a little about because I was on that board. Um, there's a huge need for urgent care. There's a huge need for emergency room care. There's a huge need for a new hospital in Richmond. We don't know if we're going to be able to make that happen, but we're going to do everything we can to get the highest level of health care up here that we can possibly get because we need it. You know, with losing that emergency room and doctor's medical center, it was huge for this community. So, so we're hoping to have, 
you know, some business, life science kind of uses up here. Make it a real, the mall's gonna become a real community space versus just a shopping center. And when you have more people up here with the residential, so we're, 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 they're really doing something that hasn't been done before. You've never seen a mixed use project of a logistics project with all these other uses. And they brought in, I'll, I'll tout them because I can, I work for them, but I don't, but I'm a consultant, I don't, I'm not an employee. They went out and found a world-class architect out of New York who they put through a design competition and said, we're going to do something that we've never done anywhere else in the country, or as far as I know, in the world. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to put you through a process to come up with something very unique for this property. So I'm, again, I'm going to be here, they're going to be here, but we're all going to be here when this thing happens. I think it's something we're all going to be really happy and proud about. That's my help. That's what I'm trying to help make, get, help them do, which is what they want to do anyway. At the same time, they got to be able to make money out of it. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that if you uh, feel like there's some skepticism in the room, uh, that's because there is. The last owner, LGB, said the same things, and uh, you know the proof is in the pudding, and we look forward to. Seeing the pudding. Yeah. So. I didn't work for LNG. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, right. when you hear it all the time, you get desensitized oh, yeah. and. Understood. Yeah. Absolutely. So, well, we're looking we forward hope to that, it. Yeah, we hope we can change that. Yeah. Absolutely. And hopefully, uh, everybody in this room can help uh, with the process. We're looking forward to engaging with everyone in the community as yeah. we move forward. So since Don is videotaping this, then we should... Yeah, in the meantime, I guess we should grab these backpacks for the yeah. principal. And, uh... The two, two types there. And, and give you a chance to... I think the kids with two different ages, so we yes. got some smaller ones for the smaller kids, and... Mardo, why don't you come out here where you don't have the podium blocking? Oh, okay, well... We've got two different sizes. Yes. One for the big kids, one for the Sweet. little kids. There's 150 of them. Yes. So we want to thank Pearl Lodges for giving these to the kids, and I wish the principal was here to receive them, but unfortunately she wasn't able to make it tonight. So thank you from okay, the well, principal. I really hope that the kids enjoy them and they're yeah. useful. Yeah, and thank you from the members of our, our community, and uh, thank you from members of the church. So thank, thank you, you very much. Well.